Yeah, welcome and to our short input on kinetic percent resolution. So what is this all about? We are talking about the racemic resolution in a kinetic fashion of enantiomeric molecules, so enantiomers. And we do this with a short example, and, this, and I'll go to the basis what this means. So, what do we have here? We have here enantiomers, and we have right-handed and left-handed, let's say, party goers or disco attendant order. So we have here R and S. And if we now assume that we have a catalyst, which you may envision as being the bodyguard or something who gets you through, and he who is discriminating the one or the other, then you will have a, a, a kinetic effect of them going to the party. So, if they are admitted, and take some token here as their sign of admittal, then they turn to happy molecules here, and we can depict this also in the fashion that we say, okay, these are R and S party attendants. Now, there will be different rates, as I said. Rates of R and S. Now, and we will now look at the implications what kinetic in this context means. So if this is all the same, then there will be no discrimination. But as we are dealing with also enantiomeric uh, and so enantiomeric catalysts here, mostly enzymes, then we will have something where we have an also one armed catalyst, so to speak. If you, if you have ever tried to shake the other hand of people or to offer, for instance, the left hand to someone else, you will find out how awkward this may be to find out, and then you see that there is a discriminating effect in handshaking here. So, what do we need in order to measure that? We need our metrics for the so-called enantiomeric excess. And this is defined always in view of the excess enantiomer. So, for the substrate side, we will get something where we, now if you assume one of them will be faster. In this example here, we have here our right-handed man and our right-handed uh, attendant here. Therefore, I will assume that this will be faster. So generally, we say, okay, R is greater or equal to S. Then there will be S as the excess energy. which translates, if you take these as amounts here, to the left-handed minus the right-handed ones and divided by the sum of it, or in the shorthand notation, <coughs> sorry, giving us the excess of, of the overall amount here. For the substrate side, this is defined this way. For the product side, this will be actually the other way around. Or in this, probably more suitable notation with the shorthand signs of this. Right, so now let's now look what our party will look like for different cases of R and S. For this, we will put our enantiomeric excess on the ordinate. And for the x-axis here, we will need something else. We will be looking at conversion. We need conversion. And for this, we will now, confusingly sometimes, regard R and S 
as being only one substrate and RS here on the red ones only to be the product. And that sometimes makes the matrix a little bit confusing. What does that spell out here in this context? Yeah, to get the formula right, we'll be looking at the following. This leads to this definition of the conversion. What we have in terms of R and S initially, index zero here. Yeah? And we will relate what we actually have converted already, so what is already gone, which is the difference between what we have initially and what we have actually, is then um, normalized to the initial amount here. Yeah? And this goes from zero, yeah? if initial amount and actual amount are the same, then this will be zero, to one, if the reaction actually is completed fully. So this gives us a measure for the extent how much this actually goes to the right hand side. Okay. Let's now discuss the three relevant cases as the extreme ones. First one is probably the trivial one, which we will discuss, which we will discuss very briefly. When R and S are equal, which means that our attendant here is non-discriminating against left-armed and right-armed uh, party goers here, then what happens actually with the enhancement excess? Well, that's probably very dull. You start from the racemate here, and then it will remain the racemate because statistically for every R an S is going to the party and everyone is happy on the other side. Yeah, but in terms of enhancement excess, it is not probably what we want to achieve. Then we can depict another extreme case, which is this one here, where S actually is zero. So we have a very highly discriminating attendant here. Yes. None of the S will go to the party. But R is admitted. Yeah. So what does that mean? Again, start with the substrates. Substrate will be starting at zero. So far, so good. And then, as more and more R is converted here to red R, this will increase. Yeah. What is the end point of that? The end point, and that's coming from the matrix, is as S cannot be converted as small s here is zero, yeah, actually the reaction stops at 50% conversion. And I can put this into the graph. And what you get is a curve which starts at zero and will end up here effectively at one, and will be slightly bent for some not so intuitive reasons, but it's not a straight line. Okay, so that's for the substrate. The product, yeah? so what do you get at your party? S is not admitted, yeah? only R is admitted. That means that with the first one here entering, this will be always in the next maximum success of one. Yeah? Admittedly, it's not defined for R and S being zero, so we have to admit omit that point here, but from down on we get a horizontal line. And that's the picture you get if the catalyst is very highly discriminated. Okay, let's now look at an intermediate case. What does that mean? R is 10 times S, it means Discrimination is not fully completed here, as for every 10 R, one S actually is uh, let in, so to speak, in our picture here. Yeah? What does that mean? That means that also we start with the resonate, we also will in the product, in the substrate, we will see 
um, an increase, but it will not be as steep. And if you do the calculations for a model for that one, you would see that this 50% conversion now is not pronounced anymore in that much extent, but what you get is something where you actually have an increase And then it levels off. This point actually is, and it's probably not good driven, it should be at 4.55, yeah, where you get around 99%. Yeah, so at 0.55 conversion, there will be an anisometric success of 99%. Okay, so far so good. And this then is actually held off until the end. What happens now for the, for the product? Yeah. So let's look at the first point here. So let's see, we have 10 R are uh, admitted here, then one S is admitted. And that's something we can calculate directly. We can say, okay, that can't be, that can't be one, because we have some S in there. Let's take this R, 10 R's, S, we put it in here, we get 9 over 11, which is 81%. So we start actually at 81% here. And this then goes on. And then, for kinetic reasons, here, actually, at this point, virtually no R is left anymore. So the only way it can go from that on is down. And that's also what it does. So, that's what you get. And you see in this example that for the product, you will never be able to obtain an anisomeric excess higher than given by the ratio of these two reaction rates here. If you don't stop the reaction, it will decrease at the end. What you are able to obtain is an anisomeric pure substrate, yeah? because this will eventually end up, but you will do this on the cost of conversion, because here you have already uh, discarded 5% more than you actually need. So what you get out is only 45% uh, 45 of your starting material if you want an excess of 99%. The other implication is that it is kinetically controlled. That means that this will go on. In the example where the discrimination is very pronounced, the reaction will eventually stop at 50% this reaction here with these kind of values will not effectively stop. It will get slower, but it will not stop. So it is something which is hard to control. And therefore these examples, yeah, if these kind of things are typically avoided in real life uh, processes. So far so good to the short input and I thank you for your attention. Yeah, as an afterthought, sometimes uh, men and women are picked. This is probably far from my drawing abilities, so this is much cruder, I suspect, but it's what I can do. Um, and also, in my opinion, left and right arms armed are better, because I don't think men and women are really, really... If I look into the mirror, I don't see a woman, but that's only my short opinion on that. Thank you very much. In enzymes, so mirror and mirror, um, well,
So, everything ready. Taking my shoes off so you don't hear my scratching noises. And uh, so, here we are.